So, au revoir, Mr. Olivanda, and I will wonder whether you will oblige me by delivering a package to Bill's Auntie Muriel. I never returned a tiara. It will be an honor, the very least I can do in return for your generous hospitality. Ooh, it is very nice. Moonstones and diamonds, made by goblins, I think, and paid for by wizards. Oh, everything's fine. All of them are settled in. Mum and Dad say hello. Ginny sends you all her love. Fred and George are driving Muriel up the wall. They're still operating an owl order business out of her back room. It cheered her up to have her tiara back, though. Said she thought we'd stolen it. Ah, she is charmante, your aunt. Daddy's made a tiara. Well, more of a crown, really. He's trying to create the lost dairy dome of Ravenclaw. He thinks he's identified most of the main elements by now. Adding the belly wings really made a dip. Who is it? It is I, Remus John Lupin. I am werewolf, married to Nymphadora Tonks, and you, the secret keeper of Shell Cottage, tell me to address and bade me come in an emergency. Lupin. <sighs> It's a boy! We've named him Ted after Dora's father! What? Tonks! Tonks has had the baby! Yes, yes, she had the baby! Woo! Congratulations! Blimey, a baby! Congratulations! Congratulations! Blimey, a baby! Yes, yes, a boy! <laughs> you will be Godfather! But, me? Yes, yes, of course. Dora quite agrees. No one better. Yeah, I... Blimey. I... Yeah, blimey. Lupin, why don't you stay for a drink? <laughs> I can't stay long. I must get back. Oh, thank you, thank you, Bill. To Teddy Remus Lupin, a great wizard in the making. Who does he look like? I think he looks like Dora, but she thinks he is like me. Not much hair. It looked black when he was born, but I swear it's turned ginger in the hour since. Probably be blonde by the time I get back. Adramita says Tonks' hair started changing color the day she was born. Oh, go on then, just one more. <laughs> no, no, I really must get back. <laughs> Goodbye, goodbye. I'll try and bring some pictures in a few days' time. They'll all be so glad to know I've seen you. Well, good Father Harry. Congratulations. Real honour. I wanted a private word, actually, Harry. It hasn't been easy to get an opportunity with the cottage that's filled with people. Harry, you're planning something with Griphook. I know goblins. I've worked with Gringotts ever since I left Hogwarts. As far as there can be friendship between wizards and goblins, I have goblin friends, or at least goblins I know well and like. Harry, what do you want from Grippo, and what has he promised in return? I can't tell you that. Sorry, Bill. Can you wait just a moment? Then I have to say this, if you have stuck any kind of bargain with Griphook, and most particularly if that bargain involves treasure, you must be exceptionally careful. Goblin nations of ownership, payment and repayment are not the same as wizard ones. What do you mean? We are talking about a different breed of being. Dealings between wizards and goblins have been fought for for centuries, but you'll know all that from history and magic. There has been fault on both sides. I would never claim that wizards have been innocent. However, there is belief among some goblins, and those at Gringotts are perhaps more prone to it, that wizards cannot be trusted in matters of gold and treasure, that they have no respect for goblin worship. I respect... You don't understand, Harry. No one could understand unless you have lived with goblins. You see, to a goblin, the rightful and true master of any object is the maker, not the purchaser. All goblin-made objects are, in goblins' eyes, rightfully theirs. But if it was bought, then they would consider it rented by one who had paid the money. They have, however, great difficulty with the idea of goblin-made objects passing from wizard to wizard. 
You saw Grip Hook's face when the tiara passed under his eyes. He disproves. I believe he thinks, as to the fiercest of his kind, that it ought to have been returned to the goblins once the original purchaser had died. They consider our habit of keeping goblin-made objects passing them from wizard to wizards without further payment little more than theft. All I'm saying is to be very careful what you promise goblins, Harry. It would be less dangerous to break into Gringotts than to renege on a promise to a goblin. Right. Yeah. Thanks. I'll bear that in mind. <sighs> I'm going to set my course to become just as reckless a godfather to Teddy Lupin as Sirius Black has been to me.